at Fair Oaks. Sit down, Mr. Leighton. Thank you, Major Davis. I haven't done much resting the past few days, and I'm grateful for the rest I'm getting now. I think we here at Fair Oaks have been in the same predicament, Mr. Leighton. It touched us a little more closely than it did you because perhaps of the personal element. If anything had happened to Linwell's boy, I wouldn't have spent an easy minute the rest of my life. It took a brave man to do what Linwell did. Yes, I, I know it did. It was the only way to fight your guy. I appreciate it. I don't think a man of Linwell's caliber would expect to do anything but what he did. And we're rather proud of the boys, too. Oh, yes, uh, Jerry Dugan and Lee Phillips. Mighty fine lads, both of them. Of course, we can't say that we enjoy their part in it because of its danger. But uh, all the officers of the staff and the cadet officers, too, can't help but feeling proud. Major Davis, that's one of the main reasons I came here today. I want to do something for those lads. For Dugan and Phillips? Yes. Well, I don't know what you have in mind. Well, neither do I, as a matter of fact. But I do want to show my appreciation for their part in the affair. I see. Now, what would you suggest, Major? Well, Mr. Leighton, I hesitate to suggest anything. My reasons, of course, must be made plain. First, this is a school, an academy, where favoritism toward any of the cadets must not be shown. You can see why, of course. Certainly. Then each cadet is given the same liberties, the same treatment. So you see, Mr. Leighton, it would be pretty hard to reward Dugan and Phillips. Perhaps we can figure out something. Uh, let's leave it up to Jerry and Lee. Uh, they're coming here, aren't they? Yes, they are. And uh, Harold Dunwell? No, no, not right away. He had a rather trying time of it, and we we're making him rest in the infirmary. <laughs> it's rather difficult because trying to tie these youngsters down to a bed for the rest for a rest period, <laughs> well, it's the hardest part of running the academy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Major, I haven't said this before, but my visit here won't be all pleasure. I'm afraid I brought a little bad news. Oh. Yes, yeah, about Guy Linwell. That's why I got here early. Because I wanted to talk with you before I said anything about the the bad news. I hope it's nothing too serious, Mr. Layton. In a way, it is. Uh, Major Davis, have you ever thought of adding another course of study to your schedule here? Another course of study? Why, no, not right away, Mr. Layton. Well, perhaps I'd better go at it in another way, Major. You see, Guy Linwell and I have never been what you might call employee and employer. We were both pilots together in an old aerial circus. I went into the manufacturing end, and Guy stayed in the... Well, he stayed in the air. It's in the blood, I guess. We're close friends, Major. And now that Guy is through... Through? You mean he's done? I'm afraid so, Major. The doctors advise against his ever flying as a test pilot again. Well, that is bad news. It'll be quite a shock to Guy, I know. It takes away his livelihood. No, no. Not as long as I live. Guy would never have to worry about making a living. Oh, I see. Uh, not quite, Major. What? Well, <laughs> I'm afraid you don't quite see. I could give Guy a position, a fine position in my company. He's not only one of the best pilots in the country, but he's a crack engineer. There isn't a thing he doesn't know about a motor, about aeronautics. But putting him to work in a factory would drive him crazy. It would be like tying him down. Yes, yes, I can see that. Uh, what do you intend doing? Well, I figured that the best place for him to be would be near Harold. They both had a pretty bad time of it the past days. Mr. Layton, I think I'm beginning to see what you meant when you asked if I'd ever thought of adding another course of study here at Fair Oaks. Yes. Why don't you put in a course in aeronautics here at Fair Oaks? 
Linwell would be the ideal man. College training, years of experience with ships and motors, and a fine family background. Mm, it's an idea, Mr. Layton. But would Lynn will agree to it? Uh, teaching may be a little dull for him, too. I don't think it would be in a case like this, Major. You see, he'd be near Harold, and that would take the edge off his disappointment at never being able to fly again. Then, too, he'd be teaching young men, enthusiastic young men. He'd get a great kick out of it, I know. Now, what do you say? Well, uh... uh why not do this? Uh, every cadet who wants to take the course, uh, not actual flying, but uh, thorough training in the principles of aeronautics, could get his parents' permission. I'm sure you'd have quite a large class. Yes, I'm sure of it, too. <laughs> in fact, Mr. Leighton, I doubt whether we'd have space enough to accommodate the class. And we have no equipment that would be necessary in such a course. I've thought of that, too. Not too much equipment would be needed. Whatever you need, I'll furnish. Models of planes and so forth. If you wish, I'll even map out the course for you. I know it pretty well because Leighton Aircraft has a school of its own. We train our workers and pilots. Mr. Leighton, I think it's splendid. And it certainly would take care of Mr. Linwell's problem. And as for his salary, yeah, I... I guess the interest it would arouse would help us pay your salary, Mr. Layton. Then it's decided. Uh, Mr. Layton, I... you know, of course, that I'll have to bring it before the directors and the faculty. But I think I can bring them around to our way of thinking. That's fine. Believe me, Major, that takes a load off my mind. Oh, excuse me. Surely. Come in. Yes, you've been in Phillips reporting, sir. Oh, yes. Come right in, boys. Uh, Mr. Layton, uh, this is Jerry Dugan... How do you do, Lee, Jerry? Lee How do you do, Mr. Glad to know you, Lee. And one cracked-up pilot named Linwell. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. Hello, Guy. Uh, it's good to see you, Bill. Jerry? Lee? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sit down. Take those chairs there. Oh, thank yes. you, uh, Well, Bill, <clears throat> didn't waste any time getting here. Not much. How's the boy, Guy? Oh, he's all right, Mr. Layton. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right, I didn't Jerry. mean to speak out like that. Oh, it's all right, Jerry. I think you boys will be interested in what Mr. Layton and I were talking about just before you came in. Secrets, Bill? Uh, not quite, Guy, but it does concern you. Oh, I had an idea it might. Guy, I, I hate to say this because I know how you're going to take it. There's nothing wrong, is there, sir? Well, Lee, that all depends on how you look at it. Guy? Yes, Bill? The doctors have grounded you grounded me. Gee, does that mean you can't fly anymore? Why did they do that? Boys. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Yes, Guy, they've grounded you. But why? I, I'm all right. I'm well on the road back. They can't ground me because of that crack up. I'm afraid they can, Guy. You see, that crack may have affected your sight. The head injury did something to the optical nerves. It's best for you, Guy. You see that, don't you? Oh, how could they tell? They haven't seen me for days. The x-rays showed it. Oh, but there's a chance that it might clear up. Perhaps. But look, Guy, for the sake of your boy, Harold, there's no sense in your trying to get back into the game. You've pulled out luckily enough. You've made money. Oh, I'm not worrying about the money, Bill. I'd take a ship up and dive him from 10000 for you for no money. Yes, I know that. That's why I asked to be the one to tell you about, well, about the grounding business. What'll I do? You're a fine engineer, Guy. Engineer? What do you want me to do? Stick me away in a factory, putting around engines in a designing port all day long? Oh, you know I couldn't do that, Bill. Every minute of the day, I'd hear the roar of the ships going up. I could smell the gas and the oil. You wouldn't hold me at a desk very long. Boy, you really like it, don't you? I'll say. Uh, Mr. Linwell, perhaps Mr. Leighton has an alternate solution. An alternate solution could there be? Now, oh, look, Guy, suppose we could get you into a position that would keep you busy doing something you like to do and which would keep you near Harold. What are you talking about? Your factory is miles away. Well, Harold is here at Fair Oaks, Mr. Linwell. I don't get it, Major. <laughs> I want Mr. Layton to tell you. Guy, you're going to stay here at Fair Oaks and teach aeronautical engineering. You, you mean, Mr. Layton, Major Davis, that, that we're going to learn how to fly? Uh, not quite, Jerry. What Mr. Layton means is that you're going to take an engineering course in aeronautics. I can assure you it'll be interesting. Boy, Boy and how. <laughs> There's your answer, Guy. The enthusiasm of Jerry and Lee. Now, what do you say? I... I don't know what to say. I'm no teacher, Bill. Listen... You've got more sound airplane knowledge plus common sense under your hair than the average ten pilots. What do you say? Well, I'll have to ask Harold. Oh, gee, you don't have to do that, Mr. Linwell. I know what he'd say. Just the same as Lee and I. <laughs> How about it, Lee? Well, asking Harold would be just the same as asking Jerry or me. The answer is yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bill. Congratulations, Mr. Linwell. And now, oh, gee, Lee, it's swell, isn't it? I still can't believe it. Major Davis, I I'd like to take that course. Yeah, I would, too. There you are, Guy. Your first two pupils. Okay, but I'm warning you, Bill, that I don't think you're going to keep my wings clipped for long. 
I'm going to do some flying. I think you put that same enthusiasm into your teaching, Guy. And you'll forget about flying. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh. Oh, very well. Yes, I have... Uh, let's see, just... Have Cadet Morrison go to meet him, yes. Thank you. Well, you're going to have a new comrade here, boys. Uh, a new cadet, sir? Yes, Cadet Morrison has been sent to meet him at the station. Oh, that's swell. He may be another pupil for you, Mr. Linwell. All right, because more the merrier. <laughs> well, now that that's all settled, I think we'd better get on something else I came down here to discuss. Jerry, Lee? Yes, yes sir. sir. I want to show my appreciation for your part in clearing up the, the unpleasantness we've had the past few days. I'd like to reward you. Reward? Oh, no. Oh, I know, Mr. Layton. We weren't thinking about that. Gee, we were too busy worrying about Harold. We don't want anything. But I'm going to give you something whether you want it or not. Uh, if you please, sir, I'd like to say something about that. May I, Major Davis? Certainly, Jerry. Go right ahead. Well, not so long ago, somebody made a present to me, or rather to Fair Oaks, and, and it caused a little trouble, and I don't want it to happen again. We don't want anything, sir. Mm. I see. Well, you were right, Major Davis. And, boys, I guess my sincere thanks will have to be all. Is that it? Yes, sir. Don't you feel the same way, Lee? Sure I do. We appreciate your thinking of us, Mr. Layton, but, well, it's like Jerry says. If we took anything, well, well you know, I, I mean... Uh, Mr. Layton knows, Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, say, Guy. Yes? Uh, come over here a minute, will you? Yeah. Uh, will you excuse us, Major Davis? Boys, oh, oh, sure. Sure. Certainly. Go right ahead. Major Davis? Yes? Who's the new boy? I mean, what's he like? Well, uh, I think he'll be a bit of a surprise, Jerry. Surprise, sir? Uh, well, his name is uh, Bruce Dow Campbell. Bruce Dow Campbell? Three names? His last name is Dow Campbell. I think you will find him very interesting. His father was a colonel in the famous Black Watch Regiment. The famous Scottish Regiment, sir? That's it, Lee. Oh, I remember reading about them. They served all over, didn't they, Major Davis? Yes. And Bruce's father was serving in India when Bruce was well, born. Well, I think we've got something decided, Major Davis. You've decided? Yes. We've decided not to reward Jerry and Lee alone, but every cadet at Fair Oaks. Oh, that's great. I'll see. Uh, how, Mr. Layton? <laughs> you tell them, Guy. Well, um, we thought as long as we're going to have a class in aeronautics here at Fair Oaks, we might as well have Mr. X here to help us along. Mr. X? Who's he? Well, that would be giving it away, Jerry. But I think you'll see Mr. X in about, um, how long, Bill? Oh, about three days at the most. Uh-huh. And I know you're going to like Mr. X very, very much. Uh -huh.